Oh, rip Dynamax Nido King. There is no way my Dragonite can take that out. He is like from Gen 6. Holy sh! How is it going, people of the world? It is your favorite dark type doggo, PokeTuber, Little Miss Houndoom, here to guide you on another adventure into the world of Pokemon. Have you ever played Pokemon and felt like you just got wrecked by the opponent? Like their Pokemon was so insanely broken you didn't know what to do? Well, if that's the case, then this video is for you. Today, we're gonna learn to break Pokemon. Get yourself seated, get out your notebook, because you're in Doom's trainer school where I'm gonna teach you how to make broken Pokemon, also known as competitive Pokemon. And lucky you were doing this video in Sword and Shield era, meaning it is easier than ever. Ooh, look, a shiny Pokemon. Job done, video over, let's go! I, I'm, I'm just joking, it's not that easy. A shiny Pokemon is not a competitively better Pokemon. It just looks different. Shiny does not affect stats. Not even flex stats, because honestly, at this point, I'm amazed if it's not shiny Pokemon I'm fighting. Okay, guys, now look at these Lucario. One of these Mons is not like the other. One of these Mons was competitively bred or trained with items. Competitive Pokemon are easier than ever to make, so lucky us, we can make monstrosity Pokemon with minimal effort. Looking at you, have you like Chansey? Alrighty, lesson one, understanding the stats. First, we need to understand stats. Every Pokemon has six stats that we can see, and it has factors that affect these stats, such as IVs, EVs, and nature. IVs are individual values, which range between one to 31, and the higher the number, the more points go into that stat. Every stat has an IV associated to it. These are often bred down from parents or can be bottle capped into Pokemon, so don't worry if the one you want to make broken is missing IVs. Thanks to the power of science and uh, bottle caps, apparently we can fix any IV. EVs, known as effort values, range between one to 252 per stat, Stat for a total of 510 across all six stats. These are gained from battling wild Pokemon or from items. For every four EVs invested into a stat, you'll get one extra point in said stat for a total of 63 on a maxed out stat. Nature is your Pokemon's personality, and like any good trainer, we're gonna bully it into having the right nature that suits us best. Yay! A nature is gonna increase one stat while decreasing another, and there are 16 in total, with some neutral natures that will do nothing. In competitive Pokemon, you'll often see things like Jolly, Adamant, Modest, Timid as common natures on Pokemon. If you've ever won a you'll probably have mons of these natures because basically we want to trade off reject Pokemon who just weren't good enough for our obnoxiously high standards. I'm pretty sure I created the entire zigzagoon population of Gala from releasing rejects. Be free, my failures, be free! And that's basically how Pokemon stats work, which means we can move on to lesson two, putting it all together. Now that you understand Pokemon stats, you are well on your way to designing a broken as Pokemon, but you've got to piece it all together. To design a mon, you need to look at its stats and work out what job you want it to do. For an example, let's design a physical sweeper. Yeah. And if you don't know what that means, better get commenting for me to make another video explaining what different Pokemon builds are. I am trying to keep this particular video simple. So if you want more information, let me know in the comments and then I'll sort it out. So for a physical sweeper, I want a fast, hard hitting Pokemon. High speed stat, high attack stat. Lucario fit in the build perfectly here. So let's work on him. Step one. Pick a nature. If you pick a nature that benefits the Mon, then you'll kind of know what IV you can skip when you're fixing IVs later down the line. So it just makes things a little easier. For this one, I want Jolly as it's going to increase its speed and decrease its special attack, which is a stat I won't be using. But for your Mon, look at a nature chart and pick a nature that will suit what you are building. Step two, work out IVs and EVs. Now we have a nature, we get to do the maths and plan out IVs and EVs. IVs are easy. You can just miss out the stat that your nature is nerfing. In my case, it would be special attack. That's a nice, simple way to do it. It's worth noting though, while six IV is awesome, it's not not essential. When you breed, you can only guarantee four to five IVs will pass on. The sixth is always completely random, so that's why we choose an IV to skip, as five is all you're really going to need for a competitive mon. As for EVs, you can check how they affect a mon via showdown, which will help you work out kind of the stats you want. A lot of the time, you max out two stats and invest four into a third stat to get a cheeky point buff in it. For this Lucario, I'm designing a sweeper, so I'm going to do 252 in attack, 252 in speed, and four in special defense. I honestly recommend putting the spare four into defense or HP 90% of the time. Important, do not look at the level 100 stats for your Pokemon. Competitive Pokemon, both on Smogan and BGC, will have Pokemon cap at level 50, so you only care about the stats of a level 50 Mon, not 100. Okay, cool, awesome. Step three, pick ability, moves, and items. These are also important elements in making broken Pokemon. You pick an ability that works best for the Mon and what it's designed to do on the team. Hidden ability is not always the best choice. For Lucario, I'm going with inner focus because, well, um, that is an incredibly specific and situational hidden ability. Seriously, why? I, I get that it works with the theme, but ah. I'll take not being able to be flinched or intimidated, thanks, because that's going to happen a lot in competitive Pokemon. As for items, there are a lot, so look at what items there are and incorporate them into a strategy, because seriously, we could do a whole video explaining the best and worst Pokemon items for competitive Pokemon. For Lucario, as it's a sweeper, it tends to be quite fragile, so I'll go with a Focus Sash to guarantee that it's going to survive a hit and be able to dish out more, and then next turn it's got priority, so it should be able to confirm a kill.
kill. As for moves, my best advice is type coverage and using the right type of move. Pokemon have a physical and special attack stat, and each Pokemon will be one or the other, so don't stick physical attacks on a special attacking one. Also, if you can get a priority move, those are great, as they'll likely hit first regardless of speed. So things like Extreme Speed, Aqua Jet, Accelerock, they're all great. Make sure your moves help cover weaknesses too if you can, like Lucario no like fire, fire no like ground, physical attacking Lucario, earthquake. Also, also, check the accuracy of a move. High power moves have low accuracy and sometimes it's better to go with a move that has higher accuracy and less power because power isn't everything and what's the point if the move's really gonna hit? It's just gonna waste turns. The final thing to note when picking moves is stab. Same type attack bonus. You get a bonus of 1.5 on attack if it's the same type of attack as the Pokemon. So for my Lucario, it's steel move is its stab move. This is preference, but when it comes to neutral damage, stab bonus makes a difference. Alrighty, now if we put all those pieces together, we should have a pretty broken Pokemon, or at least a Mon that is better than an in-game team. But little Miss Houndoom, how do I get this creation into the game? It's easy, you go to Oak's Lab and ask nicely. I'm just joking, Oak's Lab sucks and it makes me want to cry. It is not that hard to get the Pokemon in game yourself, so please do not stoop to just getting them inserted into the game. IVs can be bred into Pokemon, but we'll tackle that another day if Pokemon breeding is something you're interested in. For now, just pick a Pokemon you want and level it up to 100. You're then going to visit this lovely gentleman at the Battle Tower, who I totally don't have a grudge with because he made me waste hundreds of hours of my life just by existing. Now use a bottle cap on the stats you want to max out because yep, bottle caps max out the stat of an IV. So glad I spent years breeding for these perfect stats. I want my time back. For EVs, you can either beat up a load of Pokemon and use power items and Pokerus, but why do that when you can just buy items like Carbos, Protein, Calcium, etc. and do the stats that way? You can buy them with money from this trainer for two battle points or in the DLC for two Dynite Ores. It has never been easier or cheaper to have broken mons. To do this, we'll need 26 of the item to max out a stat as each uh, protein, carbos or such will give you 10 points in that stat. Be sure to do the stat that gets four last because you won't be able to max out other stats because you'll run short by six if you do the four stat first. So do the max out stats first, then do the four. After that, either TR or TM the moves on, have them learn from level up. And if that doesn't work, just go to the remove remember guy and tell him to teach your Pokemon a move. Do it, do it now. And if that doesn't work, well, I guess it's egg moves. And uh, those are basically just viruses now, which we can transfer by putting Pokemon in the daycare. And if you're struggling with abilities, don't worry. You can use ability patches to get hidden ability onto your Pokemon. Yay. Or you can use an ability capsule to switch between normal abilities. After that, you can go beat up people with your Mon because that's a broken Pokemon you got there. You see, Sword and Shield wanted any Mon to be able to be perfect, and they definitely achieved that. You can fix every aspect of competitive Pokemon easily with items and NPCs. It is insane how accessible it is, so I truly encourage you to give it a shot and just hit me up if you need help. If there was a generation to learn to do competitive Pokemon and gain this understanding, then it is this generation. But that's the tips I got today on creating a broken Pokemon. Did it help you out? Or do you want me to help you further and look into more aspects of competitive Pokemon? If so, let me know in the comments section because I genuinely love talking competitive Pokemon. For now though, this Houndoom needs to go beat up people in her gym challenge with her broken Mons, which you guys should totally bring your broken Mons to and face me. I do it every Monday on Twitch at 7 p.m. GMT and I've got nine other gym leaders for you to face, so be sure to pop on by. I will catch you guys later. Hey guys, it's me again. I'm just popping in to say thank you so much for watching the videos and also giving a special shout out to our patron puppy dog cuddles to our puppy tier patrons a doom bro fist to our doom tier patrons and a super mega doggo tail wagging cuddle to our mega tier patrons you guys rock and thank you for believing in me i hope to do you proud all of the love to every single one of you and happy competitive pokemon battling